Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I teach philosophy here at NYU, Program of Liberal Studies. And today we are addressing the question, how to write a paper? This is a mini course specifically on this topic where we went through many different aspects like petals unfolding of a lotus. The first question that we are raised in how to write a paper, actually how to write a good paper, is why are we writing a paper? The second video, in the second video we have addressed what, what is that we want to share with the world, what is our argument. The third one is who, who is our audience. The third one is when, which ones are our references, our sources, where are we locating our paper, for instance, in the history of philosophy or in the history of technology or in the history of biology, whatever is your field. In the fifth one, we have been addressing the architecture of your paper, which must be very clear. In the sixth and the last uh, video of this mini course, we are addressing how to write it, specifically the tone and style of a good paper within academic uh, parameters. So the first thing I want to say is that you really want to make sure that your paper has no grammar mistakes and there, there are no typos there. Why is that? I'm going to give you a very clear example. I had a very brilliant student many years ago who wrote this paper. Uh, the paper had uh, an interesting argument. The paper had a lot of grammar mistakes to the point that it was really hard in some points to understand what this student was really trying to say. So this student did not get an A. I returned all the papers. The student, when he realized that he didn't get an A, he was very upset. And so he came to me, to my office hours, and said, Professor, why didn't I get an A? I said, dear student, you have a very good argument here, but your paper is full of mistakes, full of grammar mistakes. There are a lot of typos. And this is uh, a paper that is not going to be um, happily read by other people apart from you, because sometimes it's even unclear what you're trying to say. So he said, well, why is grammar that important? And so I asked him, let me ask you a question. What do you want to do in your life? He was into business and he wanted to sell insurances. I said, okay, uh, in that moment, it was time to get back to our classroom. So he said, come with me. We, we entered the classroom. And so I asked everyone, let's play this thought experiment. As a teacher, I really love thought experiment. And I said, everyone, uh, answer to this question. Let's create this scenario in which you're really trying to look for a health insurance. I am based in New York, and so people here are uh, often uh, trying to find a good health insurance for their specific situation. So I said, like, you're looking for a health insurance, and you're really, you know, like, uh, trying to find a good one for you. The day, you receive an email with a very good offer. The health insurance has everything that you're looking for and it's very affordable. So you're very excited. You start to read your email and very soon you realize that, the, that this email is full of grammar mistakes and is full of typos. So I ask, how many people would enroll in this insurance? And out of 25 people, there was no one person, no one, zero who would actually enroll in this insurance. So I say, why not? It's a good deal, very cheap, you, it's what you're looking for. Why wouldn't you enroll in, in this insurance? And so they explain because if the email comes with so many grammar mistakes and typos, I cannot trust them. It means that they are not serious. And so later on, uh, I talked to this student and said, now you understand why you need to work on your grammar. Now you understand why you need to work on your typos, because it gives the impression that you are not rigorous, that you're not serious, that you are not, for instance, in our case, a good scholar. I also want to add something here. I am originally from Italy. I'm, I was not born in the States. So English was, is not my first language. So first, when I moved to the States, I would always ask either a friend or a family member or, or a colleague to double check my writing specifically for that, not to have any grammar mistakes. Because they don't, they almost like they discredit you. You put all this effort, you put all these hours into writing, and then there are grammar mistakes and the people are going to say, oh, this person is not serious. I'm not going to read their papers. So really make sure that you have a good, no grammar mistakes and no typos. And this is not only for international students, but for everyone. 
Another thing that is very important is the syntax, which simply means sentence construction. Uh, I'm going to give you a general guideline that you should not take as a rule uh, written on stone. But in general, in academic writing, you don't want very short sentences. Like, these are not text messages. It's not like um, the library was uh, at NYU, full stop. NYU was, was located uh, close to Washington Square, full stop. Uh, Washington, Square, uh, Washington Square is in New York City. That is not how you write an academic paper. Let's say that the sentence usually is between two to three lines. You don't want to super long sentences where there are eight or nine lines. That's way too much. Academ academics used to do that. Uh, you know, if you read type of, type of writings that were done in the past, you could find sentences that were like 10 lines. And they give you a headache. It's too much. But not too short either. Uh, this is not a song. This is not a poem. This is not a text message. Think of two to three lines, more or less. And also punctuation. Um, now we're really going into the refining. I, no one would you know, give you a C because the, your punctuation is not perfect. But if you're going to go for perfection, think of punctuation as the, the last bit. It's almost like when you cook an amazing dinner and you put a little spice on just to give some color, some light taste. It's, it's the spices on. So the punctuation is the, the final touch. So is that a full stop? Is that a comma? What do you need? So Take it punctuation is your last refining. It's almost like you have a marble and you go layer after layer until this is the real navigation. It's the last, the last part of the process. Mm? All right. Also, what, what is that you don't want to do? In academic writing, you don't want any generic statements. Let me give you an example. As I was mentioning, I'm originally from Italy. So something that maybe some people mm, could say is that Italian people love pasta. That is a generic statement. I know a lot of people who are Italian and who cannot eat a lot of types of pasta for different reasons. Maybe they don't like it. Maybe they have celiac. Maybe they have you know, gluten intolerance. Yes, there are other types of pasta, but do not generalize ever. Make it specific. You can make, you know, like you can say uh, in Italy, uh, the cooking of pasta uh, was, became really part of the tradition, but don't generalize ever about whole population or a whole category. Mm? So avoid any type of generic statements. Another thing that you want to avoid is subjective terminology. Let me give you an example. All right, a good example is uh, um, New York is a great city. That doesn't mean anything. What does it mean? If someone hears you saying that, they say, OK, this person likes New York, but it's not clear why you like New York. You could write that in a song. New York is a great place, sounds good. In a text message to your friend. But in a paper, you want to be specific. For instance, you could say, um, I personally enjoy New York so much because of human diversity or because uh, of all the possible uh, um, groups of people that I may encounter. Be very specific. So great is a subjective terminology because it doesn't mean anything. What is great? Maybe someone like New York because of that. Maybe some other people like New York because it's close to the ocean and they can go to Brighton Beach and really look at the horizon. Why is that you like New York? Be specific. Or for instance, saying, Red is the best color. Ask your friends. Some people may not like red at all. So you can say maybe I uh, developed a, a love for the color red. But be specific. Don't uh, generalize and don't use subjective terminology. Uh, last thing that I want to say about uh, what not to do is informal language. It is true that maybe in some papers you may want to uh, bring some of the personal. So for instance, and I'm going to talk about in a second, maybe you want to talk about something that happened to you, and maybe there is a little dialogue that you want to place maybe at one point in the paper, and maybe there is some uh, slang that you want to add. But in general, this is a formal type of writing. So don't use too many contractions. Instead of saying, you know, like, don't, don't, say, do not, uh, make sure that you understand that this is more of a formal type of writing. And the same goes if you're writing a letter of interest for, an, for a job, or if you're writing, for instance, an application for a PhD. So make sure you understand that this is formal writing. You are not talking to your friends. You may also talk to your friends, but dignified as someone that can also be not your friend, someone who doesn't know you, OK? So I want to add something here because um, sometimes students ask me, well, should I write my paper in the first person or in the third person? So traditionally, papers were written in the third person because the idea was that academia was objective. This changed 
in the 70s, when a, a lot of people realized that a lot of this paper that were written from the third person were actually not objective at all. They were all coming from one specific step standpoint, which usually was the standpoint, for instance, of the colonizer, the standpoint of the dominant uh, groups in society. So a lot of people in the 70s, uh, for instance, think of uh, post-colonial uh, studies, and, uh, and uh, there, is, there are a lot of examples here, started to say, well, let us uh, speak, let us bring the eye to our own perspective. And so from the 70s on, it's perfectly fine to use the first person in academic writing. Um, furthermore, this is something that was really a beautiful motto of the feminist movement in the 70s, that the personal is political. And I want to underline this. Um, something that makes a, a, a paper stand out, something that makes a paper special, that, wants, that the audience wants to keep reading, is when this specific uh, situation happens when the writer shares something that happened to them, not to complain or to feel bad about themselves, but to share a lesson, to make it universal, to make it political, to change that habit, for instance, within society. So something that I highly advise is, uh, and this is kind of the best case scenario, if you are, for instance, uh, writing about, uh, I don't know, technology, uh, and you are, uh, uh, you know, all the aspects that we've been talking through all these videos, you can add something personal. Uh, for instance, um, you can start the whole paper after your introduction with an example of maybe you uh, in a moment when you were maybe, uh, you know, doing the search that changed your life forever. Something personal or, may, or maybe uh, your issue with technology, maybe the fact that maybe you are using too much technology. Even when you don't want to use technology, you still find yourself checking your emails. Uh, make it personal. Of course, here we should say never share what you are not ready to share. Keep in mind that any paper is a public type of writing. It's not your personal writing. It's not just for you. So I want to make sure that when you write a paper, never share what you are not ready to share. Uh, and if you want to go the extra mile, and if you want to make really special, really make sure that your audience is engaged, bring a personal example and make it universal. Think of someone who doesn't know you, who by reading that, reading that understand a little more about humanity. So don't think of uh, a family member who wants to know uh, about you know, your experience because they love you. Think of someone who doesn't know you and that experience that you had really allowed them to understand more about our all human species. And maybe something that needs to be changed or maybe something that works really well. On this, let's go the extra mile. At this point, if you watch all this video, really want to try to have a perfect uh, paper that is really making a difference. So here I would like to address the fact that if you place awareness in your wording, you are going the extra mile. This is the A+, plus. it's no longer just an A. I uh, think that in many traditions, uh, the idea is that to manifest, you need to think something and the words are part already, already of direct manifestation. So by writing your paper, you are manifesting something. That's why I say, be clear about your argument. Make sure that you care about what you write about, as we talked in, in number one and two uh, videos of this course. So here I would like to say, this is when you really think of this paper as a process of awareness. So this is a, going the extra mile. Try to be aware in the way you, you write. For instance, try to make sure that you really dignify human diversity. Try to be using a terminology, try to use a terminology, for instance, that is gender aware, that is race aware. What does it mean? Uh, if you're talking about the human, don't, ju don't say just men, unless you're really talking about men. To say humans. If you're talking about humanity, don't say just mankind or humankind or, 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 or womenkind. Say humankind. Make sure that this, this message can really get to the heart of the highest number of people. And you don't want the people to feel like, oh, these people are really not considering me because they are using, for instance, a sexist or a racist language. You want to get to as many people as you can because your message is important and you're spending all this time to write your paper. And I am a posthuman philosopher and I really think that also non-human dignity is very important. So if you're going the extra mile, trying to write in a way that dignifies all beings, that they're human or not, that they are biological or not, let's, let's, let's talk with dignity about technology, about non-human animals, and about, of course, all our human, uh, human species. So thank you so much for watching. 
we have been discussing how to write a paper, what are the tone and styles that are really uh, flourishing in a paper that wants to be a very good paper, an excellent paper, an outstanding paper. This is the last of this mini course on how to write a paper. We are going to offer also very short videos about possible exercises that you can uh, implement to really solidify your writing skills. Thank you so much, everyone. My name is Francesca Ferrando and I teach here at NYU. And I wish you all a wonderful papers. I know that they are going to be making a change in this world. Thank you so much for watching.